Peggy Ornstein's new book, Girls and Sex Navigating the Complicated New Landscape, offers an inside look at the mind of teenagers, their views on casual sex, love and relationships, and she interviewed more than 70 young women between the ages of 15 and 20. Peggy Ornstein, good morning. You join us at the table. It's a difficult topic for the kids to discuss, for the parents to discuss, but it's a very important conversation to have. It is, and I have to say, the first couple interviews that I did, but just between you and me, uh -huh. I totally blew them because I, it's not easy for me either, you know? But once I got more used to it and once I suspended that judgment and really could listen to the girls, then it was great. And they were so happy and I could bring their voices back so that parents and girls could read them and really start that conversation. Even the definition of sex seems to be confusing to a lot of kids, right? Well, I'll tell you, we really have to broaden the definition of sex beyond just intercourse because that does not encompass all that kids are doing. And when we don't talk about other things, when we don't talk about, say, oral sex, mm -hmm. that opens the door for coercion and lack of reciprocity and disrespect. You know, it jumped out to me, not that so much, but just this idea. There was one girl, there was a quote where she said, every girl's desire is to be just slutty enough. I don't even know what that means, and how. I'm that not sure means, she that's what she, that but means. that's shocking to me, yeah. more so than them not knowing the definition of well, sex. Well, you know what one girl said to me was that usually the opposite of a negative is a positive, but when you're talking about girls and sex, it's two negatives. You're either a slut or a prude, and you're trying to find that spot in the middle where you can stand, and it's ever shifting whether you're talking about real life or whether you're talking about online life. I'm struck by the vocabulary thing. I mean, they really do use words unique to them. Right. Like, well, the one that we always hear about is hooking up, right? Yeah. right. Hooking up is a completely meaningless word. Every time somebody used it, I had to say, and that means? I because always said it, it meant mean, having sex. But they all have not. a different definition. They all have too. a different, it might mean kissing, it might mean sex, it might mean oral sex, it can mean anything. So even the kids themselves don't always know what's going on. And they talk about, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a, a word nerd, so of course that really interested me. So things like... Um, Catching feelings. Mm -hmm. You don't want to catch feelings like it's a disease, right? Mm -hmm. um, talking instead of is, is means dating, you know, means, you know, seeing somebody now. So are they feeling pressure to have yeah, sex? You, you, yeah, you, you, you talk about they're not having more sex than they used to, but are they feeling more pressure to have sex? Are they having sex they don't really want to have? There's a lot of non reciprocal behavior going on, and that's yeah. particularly true for girls with oral sex. And that, you know, that really started to bother me. And after a while, I started saying to girls, look, if some boy asked you to go get a glass of water every time you were together from the kitchen over and over again and never offered to get you a glass of water or just kind of went, okay, I'll get you a glass of water, you know, you would never stand for it. These are very, you know, high power girls that I was talking oh, to. Very educated water girls. Water and sex, though. You know, yeah. yeah, well, so they <laughs> but said, they, understand but they, the she, terms, they would right? laugh and say, well, you know, nobody ever put it to me that, that way. way. And they don't really see, you, you, have a, you, you illustrate that they don't really see sex as a form of power. You have these very strong, confident girls, yeah. but when it came to sex, they, they suddenly became very meek and very mild. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big disconnects and something that was really important was that these girls, their lives had changed very much in the public realm. They were educated, they had ambition, they could, you know, they expected to go places, but that didn't translate into the private world. So one girl said to me, I come from generations of really powerful women and I'm really powerful and it's a feminine form of power. And then she told me about these, you know, handful of casual hookups, non-reciprocal, not very, you know, very satisfying, satisfying for yeah. her. Um, and. I, and she said, but I guess, you know, girls are just trained to be meek and mild and, and not express their wants. And I said, you just said you were a strong woman. And she said, yeah, I, nobody told me that that applied to sex. Do they understand then along those lines sexual assault and what that means? Because if their definitions are different and if they're meek and mild in this moment, do they understand where no is no? Well, I think increasingly, yes, they do because girls have been organizing and talking about this, but that's been a real process. And I certainly talked to girls that were not sure and or who had spent a night with somebody and had been assaulted. There's one girl in particular who her rapist drops her off the next morning at her dorm and she says thank you i had a great time and she doesn't even know why she says it yeah. how much peer pressure is there well peer pressure is always a factor for girls but i think that what's really important is that we have to really change the way that we talk to our kids and we have to break the silence that we have around not only you know what the risk and the danger of sex but frankly 
also talking to girls about what they're entitled to, that they're entitled to reciprocity, that they're entitled to ethical behavior, that they're entitled to pleasure, that they're entitled to be able to express their needs and wants and limits and have those respected. And their early sexual experience shouldn't be something that they have to get over. Yeah, and you say that in the Netherlands where they have very frank discussions, the pregnancy rate is lower, the kids enjoy sex at a later age, and it's more satisfying than what happens in this country. Absolutely. All the negative outcomes are lower and yeah. all the positive outcomes are higher. And the really big difference is that the parents, while they're equally comfortable talking about sex, American parents only talk about risk and danger. And in the Netherlands, they talk about how to balance joy and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're on to something. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Peggy, very Thank much. Thank you. The name of the book is called Girls and Sex. It goes on sale today.